will be doing a live coding session uh, using functional programming for Java programmers and Scala programmers, future Scala programmers. The presentation is for beginners, so we'll start with uh, how and why of the pure function. So uh, we need a pure function that will return one value and uh, calculate the return value based only on the arg arguments and doesn't mutate any existing function. Only those three things mean that we deal with pure function. And to test it out, we'll see some first pure functions, like five of them, um, and uh, we'll be able to find out whether they are pure or not. This is very important thing to understand when you see a code or you basically uh, write, a, write a code. You want to, in functional programming, you want to write pure functions and we'll see uh, why in a bit. So increment is a pure function. It doesn't mutate. It uses only arguments and returns only one value always. Random part. This is a, a tricky one because it's not pure. It returns one value. It uses uh, more than the argument. So it also uses a math random. So it's outside of the uh, parameter list. That means that it's not a pure function. Uh, we will not be able to uh, to understand and comprehend uh, what kind of value do we get when we call it with the same argument. Add, it is a pure function. So this, this thermometer is very useful for, to, for beginners to find out whether the, the, the function is pure or not. So add is a pure function. But what about like a Java, very, very Java, Java specific class, like from, from object oriented uh, paradigm. So we have a shopping cart with list of items and then, and then we have this add item function. Is it pure or not? Well, it isn't, it mutates, uh, it mutates existing values. In this case, it mutates items um, field. And this is uh, of course, this object oriented programming. So it's probably it's probably okay, but we don't really want to use that in functional programming. So this is not a pure function. We won't be writing functions like that. This is impure one. And a final one for the test is a get first character car at. Uh, so it's a simple function, but it's not a pure one uh, to surprise of many because it doesn't really return one value. Sometimes it doesn't return any value at all especially when we call it with this uh, with empty empty string right because it will throw an exception will not return a value so this is also not a pure uh, function for some but let's let's uh, use this kind of definition we are starting the the live coding session right now so functional programming is programming using pure functions that manipulate immutable values so that's that's the uh, that, that two things that may make up functional programming, pure functions and immutable values. We'll do a exercise just like in the book, just like in a Grokking functional programming book. This is like excerpt from, from the beginning, real, real big beginning of, of the book. Uh, the book is for, for beginners with, we take gradual steps and uh, the gradual steps mean that we use Java first and only then we switch to a more functional programming language. And this live coding session will be just like that. We'll start with Java, we'll see some problems, and then we will use functional programming to solve those problems. So let's let's have a, a simple uh, task. So we have a trip to plan. Um, let, let's say we have a, like, we want to go to Paris and Berlin and Krakow. And uh, this is plan A. But uh, then one of our friends uh, suggested that we may uh, try a little bit different trip itinerary and we may visit Vienna before Krakow. So we need a function that will uh, that will replan the trip. In this case, we'll call it replan and we want to use pure functions. So it will be like replan plan A and uh, let's put Vienna before Krakow. So that's what the parameter lists list mean. So we'll, we need to create in Java, we need to create a function Let's uh, replan. We take plan, insert new city before city, and uh, that's the that the function. That's what the function needs to uh, needs to do. Let's switch to 
in the code, we need to create an implementation for a function uh, replan uh, that will uh, put the new city before the city in the plan that we we give. So it it should be it it should be pretty pretty uh, straightforward, right? So so first uh, let's uh, we're in Java. So we'll let, let's create a let's get an index of the before of before city, like right? so index of in Java. So now we have an index, and since we have an index, then we can just add at this index a new city city right and uh, we can return it so this is a problematic implementation and um, hmm, we see that uh, we, we return a plan why, why is it problematic it's like a normal Java function we can use so let's let's try to run it we have a main function main function here so we add a and this uh, plan A, Paris, Berlin, Krakow, and then we want to replan it and add Vienna before Krakow, right? So that's that's the functionality we want to do. And let's let's run it. So let's see what happens when when we run it. We see that we have plan A, which is Paris, Berlin, Krakow. Then we replan it, and uh, we print it out, like in the in this line. So we get Vienna before Krakow. That's okay. That's pretty fine and uh, then we print the plan a again and we see that it's different than the one here and it may be surprising and it is surprising in many many applications especially on production in the night when you get a call so what we need to do is we need to uh, is we need to somehow deal with this this kind of problem on our own so we first need to understand what the problem is and the problem is on the left side you, you can see the memory right what we want what we kind of think happens we get a plan a this is a this is a value with a list and then it's passed to, to the function replan as parameter plan and we get as plan paris berlin krakow and then we what we do is uh, we just uh, create an, uh, a new uh, new city inside this, this 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 plan? So we think that we are like modifying the plan inside the function and then just returning it. But what happens really is that uh, the plan A and plan are the same uh, the same objects, right? So uh, we don't really uh, we don't really know what happens outside of of a replan function and unfortunately when someone calls replan function uh, they also don't don't know what happens with this and uh, since those are all mutable lists uh, when we call plan add we add it to the object and it's visible uh, everywhere so that's the problem so it's like a simple representation of, the, of this problem but it is uh, it surface surfaces a lot in a lot of applications that do uh, this kind of uh, imperative object-oriented uh, approach. So we, uh, um, in terms of functional programming, what we really have is uh, at the heart, what we really have at, at, at our hearts, very, very deep inside is to avoid mutability at all costs. So we don't really want to, uh, to ask those kind of questions. We don't want to have those problems. We don't want to uh, ask uh, if it's a view or can we modify that that or uh, do the uh, lists that we return uh, modify or uh, are mutable or not uh, so uh, is someone really trying to modify some something uh, inside a function that we call things like that so we don't really want those problems we want to solve business problems so is a replan a pure function? No, it isn't. Although we may may have assumed that it is a pure function because when you look at the signature, you can see that replan uh, takes a list of strings and, and returns list of strings. So this is like a very, very clear sign that uh, it returns a new value. So if, if it would be, if it's a, a void, then we would probably uh, understand that it needs to mutate something it's not pure but here the signature tells us a different story 
uh, than the implementation. So in Java world, we have lots of those kind of uh, functions, like the APIs are really uh, not consistent with, uh, with uh, themselves. Uh, so we have a functions that return void when we remove something. We we have functions that return boolean when they add something, and we have a sublist function that returns a list of string. But uh, it's really inside a, a view, and this view is not really a view uh, because the if you modify something in the view, it also appears in the original list. So lots of uh, very very chaotic API design here. And um, when we when we have those kind of APIs, we we really want to switch to something that's more uh, maintainable, that that's more understandable, that doesn't have any surprises. Uh, and it turns out that we have something like that in different languages, even in Java. And uh, this this kind of approach is is called. Uh, immutability, right? So what we do, we fight mutability by not mutating anything. So we don't really mutate, we just copy. We just copy, 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 and uh, that's why we really don't uh, don't mutate uh, any existing values. And this is built in in many functional languages, but let's uh, first do that, or let's first do that in, in uh, Java. So uh, what we can do is we can get this replan Replan function. And we can uh, create a pure version of this replan function. And this pure version needs something more uh, because what it needs, it needs a new list here, list of string, which will be uh, replanned. And this is a new array list of so we are creating a here we are creating a copy uh, a copy of, of this of this list and then we can just add add to this new copy the thing that we wanted to add and return it and this way we we can really uh, do lots of cool things because now when when I run this program and uh, it's it, it's the same program but it uses this new new function you can see that the pure version uh, behaves like we probably want it to behave that means that plan A is plan A forever so plan A doesn't really change plan A uh, can be uh, displayed on UI can be saved to the database so that's that's at the the heart of function programming, at the heart of immutability. So we have always the old history of all all the objects that we want, uh, we we have, and they cannot really change. So plan A, plan B, replan created a new version. We saved as plan B, and so plan A stayed the same. And that's that's the that's the story that we can use in Java. But there are some some problems. The, the, the main problem is that the shared mutable state doesn't disappear. It's not like we just created a copy and, and we got rid of the problem. The main problem remains the same. So shared mutable state, shared meaning that uh, uh, it's shared between many different uh, entities in, the, in our program. It's mutable, it's mutable so it, it, the, the value won't stay the same. Uh, we don't have this kind of guarantee and state means that this is a value stored in one place and access in, in some other uh, so something that that's like uh, kept uh, as a value so our replan function manages the the state the mutable shared mutable state when we look at the just just the plan parameter the first parameter of this function we see that this is a state because it can be accessed, it's stored somewhere, it's passed here, so we don't really create it. It's mutable because array list or list in general in Java is mutable and it's shared. Uh, we know it's shared because we just got uh, a reference to it and uh, from the like from the client. So so we shared it be, be between the main function and, and, and here. So it's shared mutable state and we managed it pretty pretty nicely because we created a copy but we don't have this kind of guarantee right so uh, this is a building block of imperative programming but it also adds a lot of uh, cognitive load 
on the programmers because they need to understand where this kind of state can be mutated, uh, where is it passed, who has access, who hasn't, and things like uh, who can call it, who can change it. Uh, so more design general questions that they may ask.